Hello, first of all, you can check out my code to tackle math module in the description below and let's get started. So we have these three functions that we're going to cover, which is the lerp function, the inverse lerp and the remap. So the lerp function gets two values, a and b and the t value. Whenever you see a t value, it's probably a percentage, which is from zero to one, where zero is zero percent and one is 100%. And A and B in this case is basically the minimum value for the start point or the start value and B is the end value. For the inverse lerp, it's just basically the inverse of this function where if you do lerp um, inside inverse lerp, then you're going to get the same value basically, but whatever. All right, so the lerp function, uh, you give it the start value, which is A, and then the end value, which is B, and then a percentage of the distance traveled in T. So let's say T is equal to zero, then it's gonna give you the start value. Let's say T is equal to one, then it's gonna give you the, the end value, which is B. All right, and if let's say T is equal to 0 0.5, which is 50%, then it's gonna give you the middle value between a and b let's try that out all right so i'm just gonna put that in run mode and let's do that so oh god lerp a let's say for example 0 to 10 and then t i am gonna say for example 0 i'm gonna start by 0 okay let's see so of course we should print the value that it gives us print there we go so as you can see it gives us zero uh, which is the a value right here because we we didn't travel anything so like zero percent of the distance traveled if we say for example instead of zero we say one then it's going to tell us one five then it's going to tell us five so yeah if it's for example one which is one percent then it's going to reach the end point or the end value which is 10 in this case all right, cool stuff. If the end value is 100, then it's just gonna tell you 100. All right, cool stuff, isn't it? Now what about 0 0.5? It's gonna give you the middle value, which is five in this case. Uh, let's say the start point or the start value is five and then the end value is 10 and then you say 0 0.5, per, uh, like 0 0.5, which is 50%, which means 7.5 as you can see here because the middle value between five and 10 is 7.5. Let's say you only, uh, like covered 10% of distance between A and B or between five and 10. So you're gonna say 0 0.1 in the T value and it's gonna say, for example here, 5.5, which is cool, right? Now, what about the inverse slurp? For the inverse slurp, it's doing the, the opposite job. A and B is the same, it's like the range A and B from the start A and the end is B. But instead of giving it a T, which is a percentage from zero to one, you give it the actual value. And then it gives you back the percentage of that value in the range A and B, A, B, okay? Let's see what I mean by that. Print inverse slurp. Okay, um, A, let's say A is zero, okay? And then B is 10. And then in the X value, I'm gonna say, for example, five. And as you can see, it told me 0 0.5 because the value five lies in like, you can find the value five in this range, zero to 10, half, half the way, which is 0 0.5 or 50% the distance traveled, okay? Um, let's say for example, five, then it's just gonna get, tell you zero because five is the actual start value. If you say the end value 10, for example, then it's gonna say one because you traveled the whole distance. So at, you are at the end point or the end value, which means uh, you're 100, you traveled 100% 100 of the distance basically. And if you actually analyze lerp function well, then you can see that we're saying, we're starting from A, whatever that is, and we're saying plus B minus A. B minus A is basically kind of like uh, the difference between B and A. You can think about it, not really technical, but intuitively you can think about it as, a, as the distance between B and A, okay? And then here is say times T. 
Of course, that's not 100% right technically, but just intuitively, it helps, it helps to think about it as a distance. But yeah, but it's actually the sine distance anyway. Uh, but whatever. So, and if you say, instead of inverse slurp, you can say something like, for example, lerp. Uh, let's say for let's say local a equal to five, local b equal to uh, I don't know ten. Ten for example, print lerp. Then we're gonna say lerp inverse lerp. But wait, I gotta give it the a and b first. Then it, the t value will be the inverse lerp basically so the inverse lerp from a to b and let's say some kind of value for example two and as you can see it returns the exact value because the inverse lerp and the lerp functions are the the inverse so they cancel each other out so now any value i give it here it's going to return that exact value because inverse lerp and lerp are the opposite like the inverse functions and that's also true, I believe, uh, for the inverse lerp. And here you can say lerp. Right. Uh, as you can see here, it works the same way because they are the inverse. Uh, if you compose them together, then you get basically your value back without any changes. All right. Now, as long as, of course, the range is the same as the other parameters are the same, like the constants are the same. But yeah. Now, what about the remap function? So, as you can see here, we have four constants, which is n1, n2, out1, out2, and x. So, n1 and n2 is basically from where we start, like uh, the first range, the input range, and this is the output range. So, I'm gonna give it a value x, which lies between n1 and n2. Or, and into right and I want you to give me back that value in the range out one and out two So basically I'm remapping the value X from the range in one in two to the range out one out two And this is how you do it first of all you use the inverse lerp to get the the percentage of X in the range in one and two it's going to give you a value between zero and one of course and then you're going to take that value which is going to be t basically and you're going to give it to the lerp function however you're not going to use the same range because if you use the same range then it's going to give you back the same value since they're the inverse but instead you're going to use another range which is the output range our target range um, which is out one and out two so, and then that happens. It just gives you back the remapped value. All right. Let me show you an example. Let's say you have a slider, okay? A slider that goes from 0 to 1, or let's say from 0 to 100, okay? Cool. And let's say that slider maps to some kind of player speed. All right, let me show you. Let's say local slider goes from 0 to 100, okay? And then my player speed equal to uh, goes from let's say 16 to 100 or let's say 64 for example all right so i want my player speed to be at 16 when the slider it as is at zero and i want my player speed to be 64 when my slider is on the mark 100 okay so how i can do that well i can print remap um so what is the input output range it's the player speed so i'm going to say player speed and of course i'm going to access the first value which is the minimum or in in one and then the same thing with the other one just the second value all right now i'm gonna now for the out one and out two which is the output range what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use the slider wait what the Nah, I'm doing it wrong, dude. <laughs> the input range is actually the slider, and then the output range is player speed. So those are the out one and out two, but for the in one and in two is slider one. And the second is slider two. And then the out range or output range is player speed one and player speed two. And then 
the final thing, which is the value itself. Uh, so let's say you have the slider value, okay? Or, yeah, slider value. Let's say the slider value is at 50. So it's 50% uh, uh, of the slider minimum and maximum. All right, and then I'm just gonna print that up. But wait, I gotta give it uh, the, the slider value. And there we go. It told me 40 because 16 to 64, if you go 50%, then you're gonna find 40. But that's basically it. That's all about linear interpolation. If you actually understand these functions, there we can use them a lot in game development and programming in general. As you can see, this is a really basic example of what you can do with it. And since we're in Lua, uh, if you are in Roblox, then you can use this learn function and you can feed the A and B as vectors. So as let's say vector three or vector two, since vectors also uh, support, you know, this operations or operation overloading. So they're gonna work too. So you can see, for example, lerp, the position of the first part and B is the position of the second part. And then T is the percentage uh, between those positions. So let's say uh, T is equal to 0 0.5, then it's gonna give you, uh, it's gonna give you a point in the middle between A and B, okay? But yeah, that's it for today's video. It's quite a quick little video just to give you a bit of information. And also let me show you before actually ending up. Um, let's look for something. So I'm just gonna go to graphing calculator. So here is my LERP function, A plus B. Okay, A plus actually a plus b minus a times t but in this case i don't have a t i'm going to use x all and there we go so here's my a and here's my b but let me show you what all this is about all right so i'm going to make sure that x is between a zero and t value all right, and there we go. Now I'm just gonna show you where are the points A and B. So A is in zero, I believe, A. So that's A. And B is at, let's say zero, or actually one comma B, or right, there we go. So now I can actually change the position of those points, right? As you can see here. And that's basically what the lerp function does. It just maps two values. And now I can also change the t value, but let me make sure that t is between zero and one. And look at that. So at zero, there's no distance traveled. But at 0 0.5, it's gonna be the half of this distance traveled from A. And one, you're gonna have the whole thing traveled. So you're gonna get the B point, which is the last point. Um, let's say T is equal, for example, to 0 0.5 again. And you can see that it always gives you the, the, the middle position, basically. Now let me show you the inverse LERP. So I'm just gonna delete all this stuff. Let's go, so X minus A, uh, divided by x minus b and let's get a and b uh, actually b minus a here and there we go now the range is between uh, 0 and 1 I believe or actually wait um, I guess y equal to 0 and y equal to 1 there we go and then x equal to a and x equal to b and there we go now let me actually also add the point a so a zero and then b a or b one and there we go as you can see this is the b value this is the a value so it's the inverse of the lerp function 
So that's it for this video. Hope you liked it. So see you later, guys. Goodbye.